All right, this will be perfect. What? <laughs> Meanwhile, back at Acme, <laughs> Whiskey Pete and Salty Frank. <laughs> I think that's a good start. <laughs> Nice. That's going to be our intro this week. This is uh, uh, No Laugh Track, Acme Comedy's podcast. My name's Justin Severson. This is episode... Uh, it's either 59 or 60, depending on when this is getting posted, because we recorded one last week with Jimmy Pardo, and uh, that one's going to be posted real soon. In cool. any case, let's call this 60, so we'll do them... Uh, let's do it. Welcome to No Laugh Track, That's number right. 60. Number 60. And that was, that was the voice of... The guest on episode 21, Arge Barker. 21. Do you remember way back then? Oh, those were good times. And I was on minus one that didn't get aired. That's right. <laughs> That's Tony, and I wrote down your name phonetically so Kameen. I can remember. Kameen. Ah, you, look at it. Here's how I wrote it phonetically. That's how I do it. So I K-A-H dash M-E-A-N. You had to do the H, huh? huh? A silent, you added huh. a silent thing for, huh. for a phonetically spelled... That's ridiculous, isn't it? Actually, when you look at it like that. It's smart. It's smart and ridiculous. <laughs> it is. So, Tony Kameen. Yeah. Yeah, you're featuring Arge's headlining. Yeah. Here we are. At Acme, one of the best clubs in the world, huh? Mm-hmm. Straight up. Yeah, it's fun, always fun to come back. You were here. Uh, I, we didn't talk uh, last time in October when Arge was here, but you were here as well. I yeah. came to the show, so uh, this is a great surprise that you showed up today. Oh, thanks. It's a great surprise that you're here, too. <laughs> Wait a second. Wait a second. So how were the shows? You guys did shows last night, right? Uh, we did one show last night. It was great. Really we did our first just superb audience. Yeah. Superb Tuesday audience? Yeah, it was really... Uh, Is that normal? They're usually awesome on Tuesday? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, give yourself some credit, too. <laughs> I mean, no. It was rare because you're here. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Arjo, I was listening back to the first time we talked. Yeah. And uh, and one of the things that stuck out I want to ask you about was that... Did you go on the snowboarding comedy tour i did i've done it two years in a row now how, how was it amazing it's like you know you just go around to gigs and the gigs are all near the ski hills and tons of uh snowboarding and where is this all over western canada oh. mostly around bc alberta and not, mostly bc but a little alberta and a little ontario and it's called that it's called the- it's called snowed in but i i on my first year on the tour i was like you blew it you should have named it snow joke it's just it's <laughs> can they change it no, nah, no, nah, they won't change it. So I would sometimes say that on stage, welcome to Snow Joe Comedy Tour. That's really good. That's much better, yeah. It is better, but it's Boom. already branded as Snowed In. That's a dumb name. You could have knockoff t-shirts. Hey, hey I didn't say that, Dan. I don't, I don't think Snowed In's bad. I just think... I'm not, sn- doing, I'm not doing it. Snow Joke's better. <laughs> so they don't take you along for the snowboarding, Tony? No, I, I do the roller skating tour. <laughs> yeah. The little girl roller skating tour. It's called Roll This. It's not even a good name. <laughs> I, I was I, 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 I touched rolling on with a laughter. Roll. Rolling with laughter. On a roll would be better. Rolling with laughter. I'm the guy that always has the better name. <laughs> on a roll would be better. Because yeah, if you're a sandwich. No, I rolling with laughter. Relates, like when you're on a roll. Rolling when with laughter. When you're on a roll. Rolling with laughter. Okay, on it. a roll would be the sandwich shop tour. Thank you. Yeah, I'm with you. What else do we want to name? <laughs> what else do you got? <laughs> streets. We could do that. <laughs> Someone's unborn child. Ooh. If I was having a kid, what would I, what should I name? How about it? this? Uh, how about just in time to have some responsibility in your life? <laughs> there you go. How about no la- instead of no laugh track? No audience. <laughs> it it almost he didn't echoed. Know at home, he had to really lean in on that one. Yeah, that, that's right. <laughs> yeah. That's right. You guys are uh, buddying up and sharing a mic. Yeah. Yeah. Where did, how did you two meet? How long? Where does that go back? Can you play some heart music so we can have a fade back sequence? <laughs> Well, it was a long time ago. It was a different, simpler place. Just had harmonicas. That's actually how we met. Wow. That's a musical rendition. We met at the Holy City Zoo uh, many years ago um, when I was just starting. Tony had been doing it a little while. And I perceived him as a big shot comic. Oh, <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> and and anyway, I knew he was a wise guy. I knew I knew he was a wise ass. Yeah. And I remember I, I remember the exact moment we met because he's like, "Hey man, that was, that was pretty funny." And I looked at him like, Are "You fucking with me?" <laughs> I didn't believe him. <laughs> but he he actually paid me a compliment. But I was. Uh, I was too insecure to think that he w- that he really thought I was funny. But anyway, that's how and we nothing's met. Nothing's changed. 
Nothing's changed. Nothing's over changed. Here. Nothing's changed. Hey, Arj, that was a good set last night. <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'll That's suck $50. it. <laughs> <laughs> How often are you working together now? Uh, I think on, so he comes this, out from Australia this summer, so maybe this, this is probably the last five, time actually. Five, five weeks. About five weeks a year. Five weeks a year. Five painful. Basically, yeah. <laughs> I, I am forced to, to because for tax reasons, I have to, I'm I have to do a certain I'm amount of weeks in the in the United <laughs> States, and uh, and it's a major write off. Is that right? Most uh, audiences write me off too. So <laughs> no, no, it's fun. Uh, I I like to work with friends, so I work with Tony Kameen, here, seen here. Heard here, and also Louis Katz sometimes features for me. Very but he, uh, oh yeah, funny guy. Uh-huh. He's, he's headlining more and more. So I think he might even headline here. I'm not sure. Yeah, I saw his name back. It's tougher to get get him on board. It's tougher to get him under under my thumb these days. Does oh, with this one, I know. With this one, I don't worry. <laughs> he's not going to go anywhere. <laughs> and you guys, and just to catch people up, because your name came up in the last time we talked, you uh, you guys did the marijuana logs together. I do not remember that at all. It, it happened. Are you sure? I read it somewhere. Huh. Someone guess, told me. I guess uh, I guess you can't argue with that kind of logic. Well, if uh, you don't remember it, then that confirms you did. Oh, you're right. I guess, yeah, <laughs> we did with a, with Brian Posehn, me and Arge, and toured all around with it. Went to New York. <laughs> Are you, that means yes. Yes. Are you still doing a uh, version no, of that? not really. No. Oh, you don't go on a broke dick logs no more? No, we did it for a while here and there, but we haven't done it in a while. It's nice to take. I think it's. It might have been. It might be over. Really? I thought you guys still do it. Do it sometimes. Uh, we haven't. We haven't probably in like a year. Inter inter marijuana log communication isn't as the best as you can see. <laughs> I think a lot of listeners are like, wow, well, well, really? <laughs> You're not on the newsletter, Arsh. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I actually get the odd, very small check from their performances because we get a, the writers get a, you know, we get a small fee for. Actually, being, I think those come from foreign rights more. Those checks. Oh, really? Yeah. So it's actually pretty cool. Once in a while, sometimes you, 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 know, you go to your, you go to your mailbox, <laughs> as you know you do. <laughs> and there'll be like a check for a couple grand or something. It's like Brazilian rights or something, you know. And it's funny. A couple grand. Yeah. I get no checks for... Cool, wait a second. Yeah. I, well, I signed a thing with... <laughs> I'll cut you out of the... You're busy. <laughs> wait a second. Honestly, are you serious? A couple grand? I think once, yeah. Art? Recently? No. No, it's been, it's been a while. Like last year, I got one for something. Maybe it wasn't a couple grand. Maybe it was like... Uh, well, it was we'll talk like, about... The, we'll take this one off I, the air. I should, yeah. <laughs> I'll maybe take my was... I'll, I'll take my answer off the air. Thanks. <laughs> Long time listener, full time non believer. <laughs> How did you get? How did you and Arch meet? Oh, that goes back. Um, get the harmonic. That was right? cue up the old harmonic. Two thousand five. I'd been hopping trains mm-hmm, like a hobo. Yep. Are you a hobo by train? Well, there's a, there's no hobo podcast. That'd be a good that'd be a good market. You're right. Hobo cast. I uh, I dressed up as one for Halloween once. That's racist. It's, it's a close. <laughs> My family were known for being against ho- hobos. Hobos are the nice hobophobia. Of all bums, though. Hobophobia, right? Is that what yeah, that's called? I like it. <laughs> Thank you. Job. Thank you. Can we steal that from you? Yeah, feel free. Oh, uh, hobo- <laughs> hobophobia. The next hobos will want to be marrying each other. That's right. That happens. At, that starts, by the way, hmm. in this state, Minnesota. Tonight. Well, oh, tonight, really? Twelve oh one. That's great for your. He has. A, he talks about it on stage, so that'll be like tonight's a, legend, a historic night. What happens tonight? Uh, gay marriage, gay kick marriage kicks in twelve oh one. All right. You, you, you don't think we're here by coincidence, do you? <laughs> he doesn't think we work together all the time. I mean, we might as well just tell him. Into the ring. <laughs> we're the luckiest girl in the world. Who's taking whose name? Ah, uh, we worked that out. Hyphen. Uh, I don't know yet. We're, I think Arj has already been taken. Arj, Arj would be weird. <laughs> I don't know how marriage works. <laughs> okay, it's all new. It's all new to us. We're excited. No, We're happy excited. for it. That's good. Good for you. Good for you, Minnesota, yeah, for bye. letting people uh, do their thing. What do you, uh, Tony? Yeah, are you in favor of gay marriage? I am in favor of gay marriage. Why? What do you have to say to people who think it shouldn't be allowed? They're wrong. 
But are you? Uh... Well, you better, yeah. hey Tony, I am, I am married. I'll tell you right now, marriage is the gayest fucking thing, anyway, in the world. <laughs> right? Why? I hang out with a girl all the time. I watch a Bravo reality show. Bachelorette. Bachelorette. Hey, who, I used to have a life, man. And you know the worst part about being married? Besides, you can't have sex with other people. Is that you're married? Mm-hmm. So yeah. What about what? Are you in bed before Letterman? Oh, way before. That. That <laughs> nothing to do with being gay. That's a different part of the joke. You said <laughs> you retard. I'm sorry. That's a hurtful word. You develop me a disabled person. I was just trying to help him. Thanks. And I understand you are gay marriage. I understand you have some gay marriage jokes. It's the worst setup. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Well, these flies are all over me, and I don't know what to do. Well, these flies are all over me, and I don't know what to do. But I can't take it no more. So I go home and take off my dog shit suit. Maybe it's just, maybe it was the suit that was attracting him. Could be. Could be. <laughs> I think uh, the harmonica is probably the least gay instrument. All that blowing? No, just sound-wise. It's, 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 you just figure some old dusty pro- minor or something or some country hillbilly. That's yeah. true. What, what, uh, how long have you been carrying around a harmonica? Mm, ever since uh, you get it <laughs> I learned how to play in... Um, I'll take this one. I learned how to play oh, in... Can you hear people tuning out, actually? <laughs> as a teenager in my late teens and played a bit in my early 20s, then gave it up and only started playing again a couple of years ago because it's fun. Self-taught? Yeah. I bought this book called Harmonica for Dummies. or It wasn't for <laughs> Dummies, but... Apropos. It, no, it wasn't for Dummies because that's that, you know, that series of books, right, but it was right. sort of along those lines, kind of jokey, but I taught you how to play. is cool. I think when I was a kid, I had a plastic one. Was it? Did you yeah. start with the plastic one? No, it was one? a real one. It, it came real with the real one. Marine Band it, ones are pretty good cheap ones, aren't they? It was a Marine Band, exactly. Um, it's metal on the outside with wood in the middle. Okay. And this thing, this, this, it came with this cassette tape, you know. And uh, taught you how to play. But you had to join the Marines to get an official one. That must have been a lot Yeah, you had to join the Marines and stuff, which was a little awkward. <laughs> a little hard. Do you sometimes have that in your pocket and think you have your phone, but it's... <laughs> Can you answer that instead? Oh, boy. Hello? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Looks like it's about the same size. It is about the same size. Only this is thicker and doesn't have a lot of the apps that a, a phone would have these but days. Less apps. Yeah, You're less right. apps. They You're... should come out with more apps for harmonicas. Where's that, people? Come on. Oh, I smashed my phone. Oh, smashed no. it. I don't know what happened. Uh, just t- take my advice, people. Don't download iScale. Because <laughs> 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 you said it. Like... Stitches are healing up real good, though. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's good. <laughs> and then you took off your dog, sh- dog, your shit, dog shit suit and got right on the scale? I took my dog shit suit off because the flies were all over it. Where do you uh, where do you live, Tony? Uh, Los Angeles, California. I just moved from New York. What? Why the move? Uh, my wife is a TV writer, so she got she kept getting jobs in LA. It was like third one, and all our meetings were in LA. So it's just like, let's get the heck out of New York and move to where it's less good, but less cheap. That's more cheap. I'm he, sorry. he just bought a house. Tell, looking at you're looking yes. at you're looking at a brand new homeowner. Homeowner. Congratulations, I'm homeowner. a hobo. I also own a hobo. A hobo. You're not so homeonophobic. I'm a, I'm a hobo. <laughs> You're not a homeonophobic. <laughs> I'm a hobo owner. <laughs> You're not afraid for owning a house. You're a owner. Owner owner. You're a homo. <laughs> You're not homeonophobic. You're not a homeonophobic. Homeonophobic. I'm not homeonophobic. <laughs> if you like harmonica house jokes and hobos, tune in for the podcast. <laughs> Come on down. <laughs> uh, I wish I was dead. I brought some stuff here. Oh, great! What do you got? This will be perfect because now that there's two of you, it'll be absolutely. Is perfect. it chronic or dank? No, but we'll talk about that after when we're when the mics are off here. Uh, this is a list of turnoffs. This, this is uh, the seven biggest turnoffs before, during, and after sex. Penis number for one for who? For, uh, according to who? That's right. Perspective is a lot of these. You know, according to who? Mm-hmm. Yeah, good. 
According, yeah, according to who? This is just for men and women. Okay. Uh, so I, I'm going to read these and get your opinion. Is okay. this when like, the thing isn't going good enough, you have these questions? <laughs> no, no. I bring this stuff all the time. No, no, no. It's, no. It's, yeah, it's, no, no, no. Right. Yeah. it's content. Hey. Okay. I'm trying to sell some tickets to go see Tony and Arch. Okay. Darn it. All right. So these are the seven biggest turnoffs before, during, after Number sex. Seven. Number seven. Bing. Having the TV on, showing a comedy. If you find yourself listening uh, to the TV instead of focusing, the laugh track and lame jokes kill the mood. True or false? Uh, t- totally uh, funny that you brought that up because um, this is, uh, this is, I don't know if it was, it was less than a year ago. I was. Um, You're really giving it to someone. <laughs> no, I was getting from someone. Oh, you know what yeah, I'm talking about? All, wink, wink, huh? And Napoleon Dynamite was in the background. <laughs> I fucking love that movie. <laughs> Are you serious? The guy and or the movie? And she's like doing her thing, you know, and like kind of get, giving a little bit of a performance of her own. And yeah. And she looks up, and I'm just looking up. I'm, I'm like leaning over to the Can side. Trying to see the TV. <laughs> <laughs> and it's that scene where Uncle Rico's getting his pictures taken. Uh, yeah. yeah. And I was just, I fucking, I've seen that movie so many times. I mean, I, I some people don't like it. I think it's overrated. I really like it. Is that the point of the question? No. So, so <laughs> now he's giving movie reviews. <laughs> it was uh, it was funny because I was busted. She told me she's like, she's like, oh, are you fucking you? Napoleon Dynamite? Are you fucking watching that? Yeah, no, this movie blows. Sorry. Well, she, <laughs> well, to be fair, she's the one that brought it over. Oh, it was DVD. It was a DVD. Yeah. Oh well, then yeah. But anyway, I could see how that. I don't think that's a, a huge turnoff. I mean, if it's a good movie, then you're getting two good things seven. at once. I say that's true. <laughs> you say it's true. Yeah. I'd love it. Yeah. Are we supposed to know if it's true or false? No, no. What you did right there was perfect. You or had a story. If, like, sometimes you have, like, you know how, like, if you have sex in the daytime and Law and Order's on, like, all day, and there's, like, some kind of gross, horrible crime, that could kill the mood, too. Or enhance or, it. Or, yeah. <laughs> Come on, let's face Depending it. On your again, view. perspective, you know, is a lot of this. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, so uh, we'll see if you guys have any... Uh, Experience with this horrible, okay. horrible odors. This is number six. Ding, number horrible six. odors, or uh, the, from either breath or genitalia. Yes, 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 and yes. true. Yes, yes, yes. Mood killer. Yeah, we've for, all for for the girl mostly with me. But <laughs> yeah. have you ever heard a complaint about odor? Just from him. <laughs> <laughs> when we sat down here. No, Besides I, that. I always have a polite waves. Like I want to make it hurtful, but like. If Tony sometimes his breath isn't 100 percent fresh, I'm oh, like, he, puts I, it, he really no, in, in a good yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, I do it in a way that's not hurtful. I'll say like, have you by any chance concern? Have you eaten several <laughs> dog shit sandwiches lately, or something like that? I say, hey, did you brush your teeth? <laughs> what flavor is shit toothpaste? <laughs> yeah, what flavor is that? Is that dog shit flavored? Yeah. So, so I do. It's I do, actually I, helpful and it shows concern. I make it conversational. <laughs> yeah. 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 But yeah, de- definitely to, to your answer your question. Are, B- both, talking about lovers right now. So. Both of those. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird that you brought me up first. <laughs> both uh, of those. Did Wesley Jackson listen to I've, this I've, yes. The road's lonely, man. I've come across both of those, and as I'm sure, and I'm not sure, I'm sure I've not always in my life had the freshest uh, mm-hmm. s- smells emanating from my body. It's part of being human, but yeah, that can be a turn off for sure. We are animals after all. That's true. <laughs> Number five, talking about birth control, the morning after pill, Number or feelings five. about abortion. I don't see how that could kill a mood. Let's, <laughs> let's kill something if and things kill go me. wrong here, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's... The, during sex? or That's usually discussed before, I would think, or sometimes before foreplay, between <laughs> foreplay and sex, and sometimes it can kill a mood. Like well, when you say, no, I don't have I mean, it, and this... I have an STD. That could, I could see, maybe th- I'll throw some trouble down the road. Yeah. And with regards to condoms, does I can't feel a dang thing. <laughs> is that a good name does, for does, a does that count? Does that count as a grizzly old mind? Does that count? Does that count as discussing birth control? Or is that just complaining? <laughs> yeah, I I think uh, I'm taking this fucking thing off. I think that counts too. Uh, number four, when someone's sweat falls on you. I don't. I think that's actually kind of hot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, if it's hot and sweaty, especially, like, hot in the daytime. Oh, like nine um, and a half weeks. Oh, my God, it's so steamy. Yeah, I don't think sweat's a problem no. at all. But what if it's just one person? I don't, I don't think girls even... If it's someone that you're not... Yeah, if, if somebody else is sweat and you're not actually having sex with them, <laughs> it's like if a sweaty guy suddenly comes in the room and sweats on you, <laughs> then that's, that's horrible. 
But if it's your partner's sweat, I don't care. I don't know. Yeah, and yeah, a girl's sweat is like angel. Yeah, sweat. if you lick some sweat off some sure. titties or whatever, it's like salty <laughs> and nice. <laughs> salty and nice. You get a little margarita going. That's you right. ever had no titty margarita? Yeah, get some lime. Titterita? Yeah, you ain't got no titty margaritas, has you? Titterita. <laughs> 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 You're getting good. Number three. I'm, I'm getting worse. <laughs> the other person checking the time or using their phone during sex. Yes. Yes. Well, well that, she sometimes they charge by the hour, so that's t- to be fair. <laughs> to be fair. One more. To be fair. Yeah, I like it. You don't want to pay you overtime. Yeah. So. Well, you, you, have, <laughs> you have an experience similar to that. And didn't, 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 you said you and your wife were having sex one time. And she was in your. <laughs> She was reading or something? She was reading her book. What? Yeah. Well, she was reading it before we had sex, too, so I, I can't really complain. Okay. Yeah. She yeah, didn't even stop reading. She didn't stop reading. Can you believe that? What was the what book? What kind of book was it? She, yeah. she was she was on her Kindle, and I was in her nook. Hey, come on. So, that's electronic reading. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> and now, word from Kindle. <laughs> that's right. I, we apologize for that last joke. You're married, too, right? Um, nope. Wait. This wait is a, a ring. Nope. You're... I used to wear one on that hand. And then you got divorced? Yeah. I'm sorry. No, this ring, uh, actually, it's funny you bring that up. I had to remind my children why I wear that ring. I bought it, uh, I bought it for myself, and it had their names put on it. I have two daughters. Oh, so I had their names put on it, and just about a week ago, they were, uh, one of my daughters was looking at it, and, uh, I was like, like well, you yeah. my name wrong, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Ted totally completely forgotten. It's like, I'm All wearing right. this for, uh, you know. Oh, that's, that's nice. very. Sweet. But anyway, so yeah, that's what that is. Was that your wedding ring that you got? No, James? no, this it looks is like a wedding band. No, it does. Uh, nope, this is things worth about thirty bucks. This, so that's what this cost. Yeah. It's titanium. Yeah, no, this is Can't like break it. <laughs> stainless. Like my, my love for my wife. That's right. Is it, is it really not expensive? No, re- wedding bands are pretty cheap. It's the engagement ring that is the expensive part. You've never had to buy one of those. I have bought an engagement ring. Oh, this is not a good area. Uh-oh. Happy story. No. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. He's still out there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him in his phone He's meeting me at 1202. <laughs> 1202 means I do. Perfect. All right. Uh, back to this. Number two, someone is passing gas. That's a turn on. Huh? If you can make a little song out of it. Um, uh, I don't think women really do that, though. That's more of a men. I think a women would answer. Well, but- queefs. That's right. That, that doesn't really. That usually happens. I, I find. I, 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 I've never had that happen except for, you know, like yeah, after some vaginal uh, work is done, sometimes air is released. But that's yeah. Is that, that's, that's a not really right? count. Yeah, that's I, just a queef. I don't that's think right. I've been with a woman who's past gas, or they probably do it when I'm in the bathroom. They probably let a big old honker. Yeah, girl, girls are pretty private. A lot of them are pretty private yeah. about that. Yeah. But I'll I'll go the opposite way. Like I'll you know. <laughs> Just shit right on the girl. <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that. But like Dutch oven is like pretty funny. <laughs> but you have to do it. You have to do it like the the girl has to not know it. So, so the to, first night you meet him, really. So you have to say, do you, do you want to see something super you have to cool? Say, yeah, I think I saw, I saw a dollar. Down no, there. Do you, no, no. Say, <laughs> That's so the way you do is you say, you want to see something super cool? Check it out. And you pull the covers over. And what, what would be super cool? Like you go watch this. It's just like, oh my god. What would you be expecting, right? IPhone down. And there. you go watch this. You go watch this, and then. And you let it be real quiet, and then you just blast it. It's like the funniest thing. Uh, She'll go f- screaming. <laughs> and then you I don't know. do that, that. I haven't done it that many times, but the times I've done it were like hilarious. I was crying from laughing. Um, How do the ladies react? That reminds me. Do you know why when you go to Holland, the food tastes like farts? Because they cook it in Dutch ovens. <laughs> <laughs> oh, your Dutch people are going to stay away for this week in droves. Thanks. Oh, shit. This is a real du- There's a lot of Dutch. Real, yes. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah. This is uh, old. Well, they're the ones that invented the Dutch oven. They call this New Amsterdam for a reason. Old Dutch potato chips. Oh, those are great, Dill. They're made just down the street. Really? Yeah. Let's go over there. Let's go. Number one on this list: things you don't want to hear. Turn off during or uh, after sex. Hearing orders like "harder" or "finish now." I don't accept credit cards. Boom! Back to the (laughs) jokes. Um, I mean, yeah, I think that that has happened to me where it's like. Hurry up, or like, I want you to. I I think, sometimes saying I want you to come is code for like, let's finish this up. No, no, uh, yeah. no uh, this is my favorite part of Napoleon Dynamite coming up. It also means yeah. that sometimes. I don't actually uh, have a problem with harder. The larger might make me feel a little uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That deserves a blast, or am I? <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> 
But uh, no, if, if the girl's like, give it to me harder, I mean, that. Who do you or, call? Or, or <laughs> like, I've been known to say, like, oh, actually, that hurts, or can you do that? Like, like um, can you do that slower or whatever? I think it's just communication. There's no problem with well, that. Communication is. So I think you're going to make the sex better because you have little preferences. And I think it's important. If you're too polite and afraid to say something, then you you might not get what you want. Yeah. I, in, uh, so I'm surprised that's at the top list. But it's all it depends. That's the what, number one. Yeah, it was number one. Depends what they say. Who, who they surveyed? Does it say? Uh, this who, was who, off some website. Who some, would rather? Um, who would who would rather have a girl rip a fart in their face <laughs> than <laughs> or, have than have her say and have her ask you to give it to her harder? That doesn't even make sense. <laughs> that's a real turn off. This list is screwed up, man. Yeah, I think the list is screwed up, man. I think it's the opposite. I think that was the least offensive, and it got more offensive. I, Maybe ch- no, because the TV is not the worst either. I mean, definitely, like, someone farting would be, like, number one. Well, uh, we don't know. We're not scientists, to be honest with you. But definitely, Maybe. definitely, I think, for me, um, I don't know if I'm revealing... Oh, well, let's just check it out. Let's TMI. just get down to business here. TMI, but I think... Sex is way better when there's talking involved. Talk, yeah. You know, the dirtier, the better. You fucking Not people. always, but I think it, it it brings it to a whole other level of excitement for me. Like when they say, you're not funny, right? When you're about to. <laughs> Tell me a joke. I, I don't know why this conversation brought this uh, back up in my mind, but. I'll reveal something that's that I'm completely embarrassed about, but it's. I think enough time has passed. It was like 20 years ago now. Yeah, mm-hmm. everything I'm saying happened 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah, by yeah. The way. yeah. Uh, I had uh, like first or second year of college. The new uh, new girlfriend. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think I'd had sex there just a few times. She comes over to the, my place on a Friday night, and uh, we're just about to get started. And she goes, "Fuck me like you never have before." I went another four seconds and was done, <laughs> done, yeah. completely done. Like, well, technically, that's what you wanted. <laughs> before, I usually lasted longer. Yeah, four seconds. I, maybe, maybe three. Fuck me like you never have before. Yeah, if they get talked dirty, sometimes it's like, that's over with. It's just, or, even, or even harder sometimes, you're like, if I do it too crazy, it might get... You know, things might go off. I'm over here thinking about baseball. What are you doing? Yes, or watching Napoleon Dynamite. Yeah, I mean it's a, it's a, fun, it's, a it's, it's a crazy it's, world that sex, huh? It, have you been over to Sex World? There's a whole sex world over here. Mm-hmm. I yeah. have. Is that like a is that like a planetarium for sex or what is? The it? other thing about sex, it's a slippery slope. <laughs> what are you doing on the ski slope? Oh, on that tour with the snowboarding. Intercourse. Sex, is sex a, while skiing inter- is a slippery slope. Intercourse is a slippery slope. Did you guys go over to Sex World this trip in time? No. 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 Not yet. Not yet. I only got her yesterday. If you did, do you have to call home and tell your wife? No. Or do you hide it from her? She's fine. She's, she, she, you know, she's cool with everything. Especially hand jobs on the road. <laughs> <laughs> well, I personally think if you're, if you're in a relationship, maybe I'm old-fashioned and people won't agree with me, but I think if you're in a relationship as a comic because we have to go on the road so much, mm-hmm. I think it's personally I think it's okay to get like a hand job. Or, or maybe a blow job or a vagina job. <laughs> but you know, but like, don't you know? Don't have, don't have crazy, sex with yeah. Don't have sex with someone that's going too far. Yeah. Fair enough. I think most people would agree with that. I think it's pretty reasonable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. Oh, I like that little beep beep beep. Is a little train coming? What's that? What's that? Uh oh! I hear a European ambulance coming down the road. <laughs> What's that doing here in, the, in Minnesota? False yeah. alarm. Yeah, must be someplace else. Do you have you guys heard? Of, have you guys heard about um, a proctophilia? A proctophilia. So, I'll, 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 I'll guess what it is. Right, it's good. fear of uh, of somebody sticking their your, their finger in your ass. Am I close? Kinda. Can I guess? Yeah. Uh, is the fear of having Procter and Gamble products on your mate? Yes. Like like head and shoulders. That's right. <laughs> I'm guessing with ours because proctor means like doesn't that mean proc? Well, that means anal. Yeah, I think believe and so. And philia means fear of or no indulging in sex with, right? Uh huh. No, oh, I was thinking digiproctophilia. 
Oh, that's where you take a finger. picture of do and you stick it up your ass. <laughs> that's what's fear, going on down there. Did you feel his fear of a finger up your butt? Really? Yeah. <laughs> Haven't you seen that movie? <laughs> Have, ain't you seen one in the pink, two in the stink? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. I've heard of that. I've heard of that. Well, I will tell you guys what a proctophilia is. It's, there's a British psychologist who's recorded the first case of it in a 22-year-old man from Illinois. Uh-oh. Uh, Brad is this guy's name. Uh, he had his first experience of getting turned on by a whiff of human gas. That's what he gets turned on by. Yeah. When he, had a, uh, he heard a girl he had a crush on in school passed wind during a uh, classroom lesson. But people like to be pooped on, so clearly that's kind of maybe related. Like getting lesser, lesser. Well, there's, um, there's like, yeah, there, there's fetish movies out there. I'm not seeing them, but I've. There's, cough, I've, there's a big coughing fetish, you know, like that people get close to girls coughing on the subway. Yeah, hot girl and hot girls farting too. There's, yeah. there's like movies, whole movies of that. There's not really coughing one. Yeah, there's a cough, huge coughing fetish. There's everything, everything you can imagine, eyeball licking. Well, that I've heard of. So that's worse than coughing? No, it's not worse, but I've heard of that one. <laughs> I don't know. No, I mean, just think of how many, there's billions of people in the world. <clears throat> just the odd, just the numbers, by numbers, you know, people are weird. So, you know, something happened to them in their youth or something that, you know, st- struck the chord or resonated with them. And they want to feel that feeling again. Erecto. Er- are you a psychologist, by the could way? Be. It could be. You came to the right guy. You came to the right fellows with these, by the way. Aprectophiles are said to spend an abnormal amount of time thinking about farting and flatulence and are, have recurring intense sexual urges and fantasies involving farting and flatulence. You're talking about my nephews. <laughs> yeah, that's not just 12 year old boys. All right. What else you got? What else do I, what uh, else do I got? Panel of expert. <laughs> panel? Yes. Panel, my next question. My esteemed colleague will feel this one. When you were here last time, Arch, we, t- we talked a lot about UFOs, and you were really getting into stuff like that. Uh, we were just talking about them this morning. Yeah? Yeah. Is there a new one? New, uh, go ahead. No, no, I'm reading this awesome book right now, which anyone that's interested in the subject of UF- UFOlogy uh, should t- consider reading, because it's excellent. It's called Triangular UFOs, An Estimate of the Situation, Uh huh. which I didn't know this. Supposedly there's a was a, quite a top-secret d- government report. Uh, many uh, several decades ago, called UFOs an estimate of the situation, which there are no s- surviving copies of. So I don't, I'm not 100 percent sure if it's if, it, if even the book if, exists. If it's confirmed, <laughs> but supposedly you know people had read it, but there's no more evidence of it. But anyway, that's what he named the book after. But it's an excellent look at triangular UFOs, which comprise the majority of sightings. Yeah. Um, by a little more than saucer shaped, more people spot triangular UFOs, and they've been spotting them as as far back as eighteen hundreds. Black, generally black or dark gray, um, with similar light patterns, and corroborating witnesses. I mean, this book's really well put together, and it builds a good case for it. I really like it. I love and, that you, you are and, so and, interested. And, in and that. then he and then he then he interviews some astrophysicists. You know who know everything about propulsion technology, uh-huh. yeah. and he has them uh, uh, theorize how these craft work, assuming that what people see is real. Which you know he makes the case for that in the first half of the book, with all these you know different police officers reporting the same thing, going over their t- town and then radioing the next guy. And there's multiple cases like that, and, and mass sightings like even Phoenix Lights, even though they don't cover that. Was I think that was a triangular craft in mass sighting, but then he sits down with the astrophysicist and 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 says, "What could possibly do what these craft do?" <laughs> Did you just do a fake snore? That is so rude. <laughs> that is so rude. What a dick! <laughs> I could have just said, okay, too I'm, long. Taking the bike. "I'm taking the bike because I like this." <laughs> okay, hour two. Uh, I'm getting to the point. Anyway, he uh, so the guy sits down and says, "Well, for." You know, for to, 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 for instance, to make right angle turns, you, are you familiar with how UFOs often do things that normal mm-hmm. aircraft doesn't mm-hmm. do? Mm-hmm. It would ha- the best possible answer that a scientist can come up with is an anti gravity um, engine, anti anti gravity. So it creates its own gravitational field. So it's not res- it's not responding to like gravity of the Earth. Yeah. So uh, um, it's incredible. And he says it's he says it's all possible if you had enough energy, cap- if you had enough energy at, at your disposal. So that's the best theory for these these crafts. 
I love it. Anyway, I haven't, I haven't actually read that chapter yet. That's why I'm a little vague on the oh, details. Okay. I've just skimmed up there. I'm about halfway through. I can't put this book down, though. It's really good. You guys, When you guys came in today, uh, when we sat down here, you said you had a story you were going to share. Something oh, to talk about this morning. Oh, this oh, is a good one. Whoa. Yes, I'm so you take I it. sit down. <laughs> this is a good we one. We go and get coffee. This, this is, is one, one of those only ago. in Minneapolis stories. <laughs> this is only, only, only on the road. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Oh, boy. I sit down. <laughs> we both get our coffee. And we know we're tired. Yeah. You know, we, a little we, hungover. Let's yeah, we had a few drinks yeah, last yeah. night. Yeah. Having a good time here at Acme. Oh, uh, you know they, they, look, they look after us real nice, and uh, we're, we're, we're excited. It was an amazing show uh, last night, great crowd, and so afterwards, you know, feeling afterglow, having a few drinks. So today we woke up a little late. Went over to Moose and Sadie's, our favorite place. We're in the neighborhood. Okay. Yeah, great little joint down the road there. Great, but there is a <sighs> problem with it. Well, <laughs> this one gets his coffee, and I get my coffee right. too. And we sit down, and I guess I just. Uh, bumped the table, or I was a little, and I said, the, the table was a little wobbly. Mm-hmm. To be yeah. fair, I think the table was a little yeah. had a little case of the yeah. wobbles. As a lot of coffee places have that problem, it ain't just Moose and Sadie's, get, you, buddy. You know, you can wedge a, a paper a little cup shim, under you put a there shim under there, and stabilize it. But anyway, I spilled a little, about a, little, a few drops of coffee on the table, and he, and he, you a know, more than a few drops. And the, you know, Mister Eye Roller over here, I said, no, no problem. So I can get it when I got a napkin and clean it up. Yeah. And you know, clean up real nice, and <laughs> sat down. And like this little miner would do. <laughs> this not <laughs> real nice. Like clean it all. Get you real. This part. The, oh, so, here it comes over. So the second I sit down, <laughs> I don't know what this guy's thinking. Did you stand up or what? I just bumped the table. He hits the table like ten times harder than I did. And not just spills dumps coffee all over my phone and my notebook. Oh no! <laughs> Only in Minneapolis. No. And my pen. <laughs> and my pen was covered. Oh. And so it's like first thing he's looking at me like you're the coffee spiller. I'm like, then, no, <laughs> this, this, like not too many, like, I'm not the coffee spiller. This guy over here is a, the coffee tsunami. Oh, that, and that it's kinda... like a, it's like a coffee tsunami. Nice. Yeah, and that's the kind and, of thing. And that, honestly. I don't expect you to believe me, but this is the kind of shit that happens all, all the, time the time on the road. All the time. All the time. And then don't that's even not start the... us on the Doug Benson omelet story. Uh, okay, go ahead. No, I said don't even start us. Did you? Did you go a little contrary? <laughs> did you? Did you get a napkin and clean up after yourself? I did. I did. Like not too seven. many because I I don't want to waste paper. Just the right amount. Like napkins. You went and squeezed them out and you reused them. No, I didn't do that. <laughs> they were paper, but uh, I think I cleaned it up pretty good. But you know what? You can't clean up a memory like that, I'll tell you that. No. <laughs> no, that's, 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 uh, oh, we laughed, So that's, we that's the kind of thing that we always come back to Minneapolis, and something always happens like that, you know? Yeah. Well, actually, last time we went, we went, we went for a walk around down, down there, uh, down in the park down there. and uh, uh, we, a little mining in the, the uh, Down in the park and crossed over the Mississippi River there. Heard we, of it? Heard of it. We walked back. We ended up on this, like, Sort of an odd sort of island where there's houses. Uh huh. You know, right over there. Yeah, where yeah. the school is. Yeah. What what island is that called? Uh. Can't get off of it, island. <laughs> so anyway, so I Boom says, Island, isn't it? Nicolette, Nicolette Island. Nicolette so, Island, yes. beautiful island, but, but the train goes right through it. And we. Just, so I says to Tony, let's just let's just walk over this train bridge back yeah, into we, town. We had a little adventure, you know, be a little more Huck Finn. Tom Stand Sawyer's. by me. Sure. Evoking memories, you know, that kind of thing. And plus, we like to live on the edge a little bit. So we bit. start going on the bridge. First of all, a shit you know a train came while we were on the bridge, and we had that stand by me moment. Oh, whoa. Yeah, stand by the edge of the... We had so, to, we you had know, and get... you don't want to run too fast because there's, like, holes in between the boards. And so we made our way across, got safely to the side of the train. Train goes by, and we start going and start to realize we're really not supposed to be there because it's all fenced in. Oh, nice. And <laughs> so... I- and so Tony finds a little tiny hole in the fence. Uh, and I'm like crouching down. He's laughing his head off. He gets his pants stuck in it. No. And he's, he's, so some he starts site. to panic. This fool starts to panic. Yeah. Instead of like stopping, uh, this isn't a good idea, he starts panicking and scrambling. His pants are ripping more. And you were I bleeding, right? I wasn't panicking. I was laughing. You were bleeding a little I was bit. Laughing. I have a picture of him. Yeah, I, I, was, I got cut. But, you know, it's just a mesh fence, so yeah, yeah. chain link and, fence. And then he ended up in some me. deserted parking garage she was some just some creepy. some construction that you're not supposed to be at that had a fence around it anyway <laughs> like another fence around it so i said oh, i said fuck mini. that you know i said i'm not going in there Nuh-uh. and i went i tried to climb the He's other a fence scared to go where i go went. but i wasn't um the other the i don't think i was strong enough to pull myself over the other side because it was quite a high fence 
and it was uh, it was also that it was kind of loose. You know, it's the train that goes right under the, by the mm-hmm. field right here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I started walking into town. I must have walked. He had a to mile. walk all the way into downtown. I had to walk really far before I could find a way out. Of oh there. no way! Yeah. Oh it's my just God. Not, and also, he ripped his pedestrian. pants too. He came back with his shorts blown out. Oh yeah, that's something else. <laughs> <laughs> I stopped by Sex World. <laughs> But that was a funny little adventure. And again, only in Minneapolis will this kind of stuff happen. So if I was going to go off for some sort of little city adventure, who would I have a better chance of getting in trouble with? Mm, out of probably, the two of you. I don't know, but well, we'll, take, two, we'll, take, we'll take you on one of our adventures if you it's want. It's the two of us together where There's the a sign-up sheet. There's a sign-up sheet in the back of the room. It's the two of us together. We egg each other on. Oh, oh okay. Two oh, boy. Together. Frickin' frack. Yeah. Fair enough. Pete and repeat. <laughs> There, I got another thing I'm going to ask you guys about. Uh, quiz time. <gasps> These right. are actually do have uh, true or false. Do we have buzzers or anything? Nope. Yeah, just, you, can, you can agree, you know, you can say yes, you, or, you know, Discuss, true, you yeah. can say false, yeah, whatever, okay. it doesn't matter. Uh, These first ones are about cartoons. True. No. Yes, that is true. All right, so these are just true or false things. This is based. Uh, I found this because that Smurfs movie is coming out this Thank week you. that we're all really excited about. Smurf, 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 right? Family, family. Yeah. Juggaloos. Smurfs two. Woo, woo. Electric Boogaloo. So here's number one: true or false? The Smurfs are technically Canadian. False. I'm gonna say uh, two, true, because otherwise the question. I thought they were German or something. Because like the question, Germany. the question wouldn't exist if it wasn't true. <laughs> and what's the answer? The question is false. They are not. They're not American either. The television series uh, premiered in the U.S. in 1981. They're German, right? But the characters appear in a Belgian comic Belgian, book series. Same thing. Okay, well, that was, and I, now I know what kind of rules this quiz is playing, but I'll be a lot more careful in the future. It was mm-hmm. just a yes or no. <laughs> well, you know, that's, that's blatantly trying to mislead. I know, but you fell for it. I didn't. Well, no, I fell for it once, once. Mean one, Barker zero. Fool Let me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame <clears throat> on me. <Okay>. In uh, <laughs> it, twice. the Belgian name for Smurfs is Le Schwumps. So that's got to be true. <laughs> no, that was just uh, that was just a little fun fact for oh. everybody. Here's number two: The Flintstones was the first Hanna Barbera cartoon to air on television. False. Um, I'm going to say that that is true. Tony, Tony has two. <laughs> I guess shame on you. Statistically, <laughs> eventually, <laughs> the odds that... <laughs> you want to get one right. There's no way there's going to be three in a row, so I'm going true already for the next one, because there's no way they would have three falses in a row. I should switch them up. <laughs> you should switch them up. <clears throat> the Flintstones. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's false. Their first cartoon was called The Rough and Ready Show, which is about the adventures of a dog and cat. It premiered in 57. The Flintstones, 1960. Mm. Number three, did I switch the questions up or not? The full name of Shaggy from Scooby Doo is Norville Rogers. That is 100% true. I'm going to say true. <laughs> nice. You both got it right. Yep. <sighs> uh, Fred, Daphne, and Velma all had full names too Frederick Jones, Daphne Blake, and Velma Dinkley. Yes, true. Yes. Uh, number four, in the 1980s... <laughs> Please wait for us to both respond. Before <laughs> no, here's the next one. In the 1980s, Hanna-Barbera cartoon, The Snorks. Remember that show, The Snorks? Yeah. Oh. It's like a Smurfs knockoff. The, uh, the snorkels growing out of their characters' heads mainly helped them play music. True. I'm going to say false. Arge gets one. Damn. Yeah, it helped them swim. On the Yogi well, Bear that, that's how, That was the giveaways. Like, snorkels are for swimming. They're not All these giveaways, you got so many wrong with those, <laughs> all, all these giveaways. On the Yogi Bear Show, this is the last Speaking one. Speaking of uh, giveaways, the next lucky caller gets two tickets to see Arch Barker at Acme Comedy Club <laughs> with Tony Kameen, his feature spot. All this week at Acme. Come see the coffee spillers this week. <laughs> Why not grab dinner at Sticks before the show? Dinner show packages available. And by the way, Sticks is a great restaurant. It's a, it's it's a beautiful, great facility. beautiful. Food. Oh yeah, hell yeah! If, if the food's good, and by great, the way, great comedy here. You know what? It, 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 and the prices here compared to other clubs, Forget like in it. town, out of town, to compared to On like the a movie of town tickets. and out of town. Yeah. Fun- funky town, funky town. Don't you come with me? Uh, the best freaking uh, bang for buck, really, in entertainment. Yeah, it's a good is, deal. Is Acme? I really believe yeah. that. T- tickets are for what, fifteen bucks for a person to get in. I mean, and that's I nothing. There's a, there's a deal for thirty. You get dinner and it. You get like yeah, for that. thirty, uh, your other fifteen basically goes towards your food in the uh, at the restaurant. 
It's fantastic. That's a great deal. And you yeah. can go to one place without having to like one place for dinner, one place for the comedy. You know, and and since we since we're talking about this, if you do the dinner before the show, you're guaranteed a good seat up front. You know, that's great, but there are no bad seats here. No, but, you know, there is a difference between well, the front those, row and the back those row. Those posts are pretty thick. Yeah. If you were right behind one of those, I would say that wouldn't be the best seat. But they don't really put seats They're right solid. You feel them. safe here. You do feel safe. It's a bunker. But those are uh, some robust beams, huh? Mm-hmm. That's some good wood there. I don't see wood like that anymore. We're like in an old building. That's why. Here, we got one more here, guys. All right, one On more. On the Yogi go. Bear Show, Boo Boo was Yogi's nephew. True or false? Hey, boo Boo. Hey, boo Boo. Uh, I'm uh, Boo Boo. Hello, my little nephew. Did you ever say Yo- that? On the Yogi Bear. Yeah, that oh, it Yogi. was. Yeah, it was his nephew. Oh, Yogi. That's Are you correct. my uncle, Yogi? Um, <laughs> that was good. Thanks. That was Years bad. of training. <laughs> oh, Yogi. Uh, I'm going to say true, too. Well, you're both wrong. Ah, you asshole. Yeah. <laughs> Scooby Doo had a nephew. Uh, his name was Scrappy Doo. Scrappy Doo. Oh, well, that was a trick question. Yeah. No, they're not a trick question. <laughs> but Yogi and Boo Boo's relationship was never explained. Yeah, I bet it wasn't, but they're going to be here at midnight. Hey, uh, I bet they come here at midnight. Come on. You guys want to do a couple more? <laughs> sure. These are about uh, celebrity porn. No. True or false? Sylvester Stallone and Jackie Chan both got their start in porn. True. Uh, I know it's true for Stallone. For... I don't know about Jackie Chan. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know about Jackie Chan. So this could be a half true. But I'm going to say true because you had the Stallone in there. Why would you make it a half true? So I'm going to say true. I'm going to have to go false just so that I can pull ahead if I'm right. Mm, you're not. Dang it. Sly was paid 200 for a movie called uh, The Party at Kitty and Studs. <laughs> that was probably a good party. I bet it was. And uh, Jackie Chan was in a softcore porn called All in the Family. Oh, mm. that's sick. Mm. Uh, number two, Peter Billingsley, who uh, played Ralphie in 1983's A Christmas Story, resorted to doing porn. Excuse me, when the <clears throat> the acting career bottomed out. False. Uh, true. <laughs> That's false. You know that it's the other guy from the movie, right? Yeah. Scotty Schwartz. According to Celebrity Net Worth, Ron Jeremy is the richest porn star alive. False. Got to be false because there's got to be richer ones. Jenna Jameson, number one, thirty mil. Matt LeBlanc and David Duchovny both appeared in the Showtime softcore porn series The Red Shoe Diaries. True or false? True. False. <laughs> True. Did you ever watch that, Tony? No, but I knew like like uh, I knew Duchovny was involved with that, so yeah. I just assumed. Uh, but that's not hardcore porn, right? They were like narrators or something. Wasn't he like a narrator or the voiceover or something? Yeah, it wasn't too hard. Well, it was on Showtime. Yeah. So. so it's like a lot of you know nu- frontal nudity titties. Damn you guys ever sit there and watch the uh, um, you know, like those softcore ones where it looks like the guys going there where they just disappear? It's, yeah, it's supposed to be there, you know, going right. down. But I, you know, it looks then, like if I you took a ruler a out door, where there's a car door blocking the action, there'd um, be like they'd be like six inches off. Well, do you remember the? Um, there was a, was it, uh, I forget her name. There was one soft corn porn when we first got cable, like in the 70s. It was called, like, Emmanuel. Oh, yeah. And that was, like, soft core. Like, you'd see her grab a chair, like, sit doggy, and then the, you just, the chair, you just see the chair rocking back and forth. Oh, yeah. So, Emmanuel, I think, was, was like, the first soft core porn that I was exposed to. <laughs> I'm exposed to, get it? There exposed was something to. on Playboy on Showtime called Blue Something growing up. Remember like that? Midnight Blue or something? Or yeah, Blue? something yeah. like that. Used to watch that when I got yeah. a chance. Scrambled, or did you actually have cable? No, uh, I think we had it for a minute or something. But to to honor the softcore, I wouldn't fully jerk off. I would just sort of like go around, you know, go, go beat around just the bush, sort of <laughs> swinging around, <laughs> just get a little chubby. Yeah, yeah, and just kind of rub it a little bit against things. <laughs> <laughs> Babysitter. <laughs> All right, wait till midnight. Twelve oh one. Twelve oh one. Let's have some fun, huh? Or even twelve zero zero oh one. Twelve zero zero. Oh, that's no, that's. You have too many zeros. No, Party's over. I mean, oh, one, oh, oh wait. You mean this, this mid, the down to the middle split second? Oh, yeah. Party's over out of time. That's a local joke, folks. Prince is from here. Hello. Hello. Wake up, Minnesota. Time to wake up your boss. We got traffic weather together. Number five. Number five. Tommy Lee once described his leaked sex tape with Pam Anderson as, quote, the greatest thing that ever happened to me. Uh, true. False. Arge, you got one, but uh, yeah, overall, Tony, you blew away. Rob Lowe said that, uh, said that about his sex tape. Why? To just get more action in the back section? 
I don't know. It says uh, that was leaked in '89. Do you remember? How were people? How did that was actually like a tape tape? Like yeah, a, that was when they had tape. Yeah, not as easy to circulate a yeah. uh, like Kim yeah, Kardashian couldn't have become a star back in 1989. Well, I saw a, a snippet of Paris's, I guess, once. Uh, one night in Paris. I saw a little tiny bit on the internet. I, just got, I don't want to see her. To be honest, I don't want to see her naked, but. Where is Paris? I hadn't heard nothing from her. Oh, it's in France. <laughs> <laughs> Come out to Acme. There's more where that came from. Well, you're, you guys live in California? Yeah. You guys? No, he lives in Australia mostly. I live between uh, California and Australia. That's, that's the ocean, you dummy. That's Hawaii. <laughs> I live in Hawaii. No, no, I mean, I Where are you claiming forth. residency? Mm, either. Planet Earth, huh? I'm a permanent resident of Australia, and I'm a citizen of the United States. Oh, really? That means whenever he True blanks, that. he blanks. To rue that. Are you going back soon? In about a month. For shows? Yeah, I'm touring a lot there, yeah. Yeah. Don't you have a big tour coming up, a heavy one, like until Christmas or something? Yeah, I've toured pretty hard, actually, from, yeah. And I understand there you played mostly theaters? That's true. Mm-hmm. I was touring theaters, excuse me, just that late night. I'll get my afternoon nap before the show, I'll be right. Yeah, what's go time? Is that? That's my new show that I'm touring down under. Okay. But it's in, a one hour performance. It's a little bit of music in it, but mostly stand up. Oh, okay. A little bit of music is the, the, the harmonica is featured in Go no, Time? That, in my previous tour, 11, which was named for the year I toured it, 2011, mm-hmm. uh, I, I had these little songlets that I would do in the show. Mm-hmm. Let's hear one. Uh, I'll, I'll sing one. So they would just, again, my shows usually I break them up, my one hour shows with just a little bit of music between mm-hmm. the stand up, just mm-hmm. to give it that one man show feel. So I would like come out like. Oh, sorry, wrong side. Well, I feel so good, I want to give you an HIV. Well, I feel so good, I want to give you an HIV. Whoops, I'm in a high five. Roman numerals always confuse me. And, and then the lights would go off and on, and then I'd just stand up for 20 minutes, and then I'd come out and do another song. So it was, it was a small part of the show. Oh, okay. What, so what's the music now? Do you want to, oh, it's say? a show tune. I've written a Broadway show tune called Go Time to open up the show. Oh, okay. Can't really do it here, but it's pretty cool, and I self-choreographed dance with it and everything. It's awesome. Really? Yeah. Holy I thought shit. you were going to hire a choreographer. Ah. <laughs> how, how, how hard could it be, right? No, I did get some friend from, some help from a friend who dances. He's a dancer. I bet he is. A couple, a couple ideas. but um, flying him out, Roman. Wait, so you, up, what are you, 12? You're coming out at the beginning and dancing? Or throughout the whole thing? No, no, I just of... open up with a show, song and dance. And the, and the song actually addresses that. It's like, in case you're concerned, I thought you should know this is the only song I'll sing in the whole goddamn show. Oh, okay. so Because I'm not a singer or dancer. Uh-huh. So there, I do try to do the best job I can. I'm not intentionally trying to be bad. But I'm not great. Yeah. But that's like one percent of the show. It's mostly stand up, and I, I never stray too far from what I do best. Are you doing that show here at all? Someday, maybe. But no, I'm just touring in Australia and New Zealand right now. Really? See, I'm not as popular in the states. Right. I'm, I p- only play clubs in the states. Yeah. So this is actually a rare opportunity for someone to see you in a, in a, in a smaller venue. Well, this is a this is a, fr- a pretty good sized club, but but it's, it's great, intimate. It's a great opportunity. It is nice. I'm I'm just as funny here as I am there, <laughs> no doubt. I don't know why I don't re- I don't attract bigger crowds in the states yet, but you know, I'm having I enjoy it anyway. I like, I still like playing clubs. There's something about a club that is, you know people are out there drinking. It's a little grittier than theaters, but then when I go back there, it's also nice to play theaters. You know, where it's, you can hear a pin drop, and they're all there to see you. And not, that, not during while he's on stage, you can hear a pin drop. Well, in between before in between punchlines, you can't <laughs> you can't barely hear nothing but laughter during the punchlines. Tony, how about you? What's coming up the rest of your year? I'm writing a song. I'm going to Australia. Uh, nothing. Just you know, <laughs> being up, fixing up this house. You know, that's as a homeowner, mm-hmm. that's the full time job right there: spackling, drywalling, decking, roofing, plumbing. I knew when you brought up the word shim that you were a homeowner. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, I don't know, just trying to get some writing jo- got jobs in L.A. Got a, Talk on the mic, dumbass. Got a podcast coming up, maybe. Uh, so just a lot of opportunities and fun, you know? <laughs> Keeping it real. Keeping it real, man. Minding my own business. Well, why don't you tell them what your podcast you're probably working on? 
Well, I don't want to do it if it never happens, so I'll come back. I'll see you next year, maybe, and we'll talk about it. Coffee spillers? Well, I had a, I had a show in New York, a live show called Brown Out. He was a guest where we'd have guests, you know, comics. We had a lot of actors. Paul Rudd did it a couple times. Zach. And the, and also, we'd have drinks on stage, so people yeah, would get a little... Why, why are you so... Why do you... It's a comedy expect- podcast. How many Zachs are in comedy? Zach Bramf? It's just like... You just, why don't you let me answer the question? He's asking... Why, why don't you let me answer you the question? You had fucking Zach Galifianakis on his show a couple What's times. He's a good friend of him. Uh, and it was fun. We have musicians, you know, and... Uh, no, no, no. Just say musicians. <laughs> just say, say musical artists. Who were they? Uh, I don't know. Actually. Okay, they weren't that famous. Uh, <laughs> but it was a lot of fun, and, and people got a little drunk. We had Andrew w, WK was on, and he okay. had, we had Absinthe. Say his name correctly, Andrew Dice Clay. <laughs> that Dice Man was on his show. <laughs> this guy is so humble, humble oh, that he's I'm shooting confused. himself in the dang foot. <laughs> so that half, so, so that's why I didn't want to really talk so about that it. That might be the new <laughs> podcast, and it's on a big network, uh, Scott Ackerman's network. So Comedy biggest... bang bang, huh? I think so it's Earwolf. I, Earwolf. Hopefully, I don't Earwolf. want to jinx it. Yeah, but you know, I do like Sky. He's a good guy. I play poker and stuff. Um, so hopefully that'll that'll pan out to fruition or whatever they say. But you know, it's just in the works. So I don't want to jinx it. But like, it was a lot of fun in New York. And now that the, the, my old the host of the show moved to L.A., Seth Moore is a very funny guy. And he's at Funny or Die and in a lot of, in a lot of movies. Uh, so uh, start that back up as a podcast. So uh, we got that to look, you know, we'll see how it happens with that. Welcome to have this guy on the show whenever he's in town. And uh, you know, uh, hopefully we'll uh, kick this podcast ass. That's right. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> this is a fun show you have here, by the way. Hey, thank you. Yeah, thanks for having us. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, once again, RJ, I appreciate it. What? Uh, so oh. for you, uh, the uh, more touring, anything? Else? Oh, Did you record a CD or DVD recently? He's got a lot of them. We're in San Diego uh, next week. And Tony's it's... working on that one too, and then Cobb's Comedy Club, middle of the month, August. That's always fun. Our hometown. That's right, and that's my final week in the states of work. Ever. Um, <laughs> and then I fly back home to Australia. No, I just drive back to LA, probably. And start that tour, and yeah, I'm, I'll be recording a new DVD of Go Time this year. Oh, okay. I'm about, about to release. Uh, only in Australia at the moment, I'm releasing eleven under a different name. Oh, okay. But yeah, it's, but I, I'm not. I'm not doing a U.S. release. Hopefully next year I'll record a new special for the U.S. Right on. Some of them do. I'm yeah, gonna, we'll do it here. You did. We did record one in Minneapolis. I did before. record my special here. Yeah, the Pantages Theater. Yeah, do one at Acme. A lot of people do that. I'd consider it. I'd consider it. Perfect. Tony, at uh, Twitter, you, you do the Twitter? Yeah, please join my tweet, Twitter. In fact, I'd like, I got some I'd real like, funny tweets. I'd like to publicly thank Lewis Lee for having me back It's because uh, it is a great club. Hell yeah. yeah. Lewis is awesome, and, he, and he, the comics are just treated great. But yes, join my tweet. It's just Tony Kameen at Twitter.net org or whatever it is, but just Tony Kameen. I need some new followers, but go in. There's a lot of funny jokes and stuff. Arj, you, you're on Twitter, Arj Barker. Arj, Arj Barker, that's my Twitter handle. Yeah, and I have a Facebook page, Arj Barker. <laughs> my email is arj at arjbarker.com. His phone number is 310. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, yeah, it's just 310. I got I got, I got, their, I got a phone like, number real early. Real, real early, right? <laughs> and, yeah. Awesome. Fellas, thanks. Man. Enjoy the rest of your week in Minneapolis. There's more coffee to spill. <laughs> thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks.